So, if you're watching this video, you probably have already seen the headlines that Twitter was hacked this Wednesday. Now, there are some major social and legal implications in what happened in this hack. In this video, we're going to dive into what really happened, some thoughts that I have about it as a software engineer from Silicon Valley, and let's dive right in. All right, so first, this is not the first time that Twitter has had major scandals involving account control, hacking, or false tweets. This has happened to the CEO even last year, Jack Dorsey. This is not a new thing for them, but what is new is a hack of such a widespread level. We have accounts like the Clintons, the Obamas, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Kanye West, and many other notable people being hacked all tweeting the same crypto scandal. Now, at the time of filming this video, the hackers only walked away with about 120,000 US dollars of Bitcoin. Why do such an elaborate hack for such little money in the grand scheme of things? For example, the hackers probably could have gone to Twitter directly or a hacker bounty website and asked for 120,000 or even more, potentially millions in ransom, given the amount of downtime and catastrophic damage this has caused for the Twitter engineers. So why didn't they? Well, first, there's a few things about this. As this unfolded live, people believe that this was an authorization hack related to some notable bug or really obscure flaw in the authorization, possibly SAML or O authentication step of signing into Twitter. Notable pages like Swift on Security noted that this was probably indeed an authorization hack. There are even screenshots here from Gemini and Coinbase crypto exchanges showing that their reset password screens were actually reset to long obscured unknown emails that weren't their own. So this would indicate that somewhere in the back end, uh, there was a possible database leak or the password reset and OAuth system got compromised and the hackers were able to change everyone's passwords in order to gain access to a password reset function. However, we're learning that's probably not the case. Some hacks which involve SQL injection, database exploits, OAuth exploits, or other forms of code related injection are probably not what's happening here. Instead, what actually happened to Twitter is likely social manipulation. So what this means is that rather than going through the sophisticated efforts, testing and painstakingly trying to penetrate Twitter's defenses, instead, hackers bribed an employee, an administrator, someone probably managing customer support and service to go into a backend, which strangely, a lot of people are surprised that Twitter has this mysterious backend admin panel um, that looks nothing like the front end to keep track of its users and block lists and actions and whatever. And that's not really a surprising part. Almost every app, social media thing, even if you and I were building a project, we would probably build ourselves a backend panel to manage our users. However, what is notable is this is the first time that most people are actually seeing leaks of this backend panel. And there are some huge, huge implications to this panel being leaked due to the content of what is in the Twitter backend panel. So back to the hack. What's likely happened is a group of hackers paid off, if not one, many customer support agents to go in and quickly and in mass reset passwords and reset emails for many notable pages, including you know, Bill Gates and all of the famous politicians that I mentioned. And what they did was they set it to passwords provided by the hackers that are just some random disposable email address. They initiate that password reset to the false email. Then hackers simply through Twitter's own UI and system log in, bypass two-factor authentication, and reset the accounts to under their control. Now what's smart is instead of posting the same generic message or oftentimes completely grammatically nonsensical Bitcoin scam, they made sure that it actually looks sensible. Bill Gates was giving back. Elon Musk did it in a way that he often does. Everyone posted it with a slight twist. Now, if you've been on internet, if you've been on Twitter, or even Elon Musk's page, you'll know that it's filled with these classic Bitcoin scams, um, which oftentimes originate from even video games. Hey, give me some of your money. I'll give you more in return. It's kind of a Ponzi scheme. The interesting thing is these hackers really didn't do that for just $120,000 of Bitcoin. Instead, what I think this is more of is a statement to Twitter, which is often made fun of or joked about or looked kind of condescendingly upon by hackers of the deep web and internet communities that partake in this type of stuff. Twitter's taken stances on many political topics, especially in the US relevant to current politics, and they have even testified to courts that they don't do any type of manipulation or blacklisting, shadow banning, manipulating content, especially political related content. And this dives into why the hackers did this and why it's not really about a Bitcoin scam, but it's instead about releasing photos of that admin panel, which they had a customer support engineer likely leak access to. We have some conversations here from hackers and Twitter engineers here, likely over Discord that Someone got Twitter's internal tool and that's what they're getting hacked over. And some photos of this have been leaked, verifying 
what the claims are. Now, at first, as this was unfolding, people thought maybe this is just a test, you know, someone wants to hack something bigger, like a bank, something major, and they want to prove that they can take down something a little less high stakes, like Twitter. Some other people were saying that this is a diversion while they do something more menacing underneath the Twitter, such as an entire database leak or employee information leak or DMs leak of major notable people who use the DMs feature in Twitter which would be really dumb if you're famous and use Twitter to converse instead of something like iMessage or Signal, secure messaging platforms. On Hacker News even, basically Reddit for people in the tech field, people are talking about how Twitter should entirely suspend the platform because of claims of possible libel or slander, or just a single tweet from Jeff Bezos that may not actually be from him could completely tank Amazon stock. Likewise, we've seen Elon Musk's Twitter, Trump's Twitter, a single tweet from them has massive possible political and economic consequences. But I personally think that this hack and the way that it was done and through social engineering wasn't any statement about code or security methods or any real money-making scheme. Instead, it was to get Twitter in a hot water for its political affiliations. Twitter has testified to Congress that it is a platform, not a publisher, which means that it's protected by a certain section under US law in which that Twitter is allowed to publish anything that any users say and is not be held liable for it. Now, that section only covers them if Twitter agrees, which they stated under oath, that they do not manipulate their timeline and they do not filter out especially political events. And what this panel has shown through this hack is that Twitter even has, which is not surprising that they have this, a feature that lets them shift trending topics completely shadow ban users, blacklist people, raise and lowers people's priority in timelines and on the trending page. And what that means though, is that what Twitter swore to the government it did not have and did not possess the capabilities of doing, it actually does. And that would remove Twitter's section 230 protection, which means that Twitter is not a platform. They are in fact a publisher of curated news and media, and they are liable for the content posted on their website, particularly by their notable users. Now, some people may not like politics and tech, but this hack is largely mainly political. For example, in the past year or a few years, we've seen with Trump that his tweets were protected under freedom of speech and that for better or for worse, Twitter cannot delete his tweets or kick him off the platform, especially as a high profile figure. Instead, all they can do is add possible fact checking to what he tweets. However, such has not been the case for a lot of users, whether famous or completely unknown people. People have been kicked off, people have been shadow banned, and this leak of the tool confirms that this is actually true. Which means that Twitter has been very discreetly curating the tone and content of the platform. And for a social media company of this scale, that's a very, very dangerous stance that could actually get them in hot water with the US government under free speech laws. For example, earlier this year, Facebook made a controversial stance, especially in Silicon Valley, in which they would not remove fake news content, Russian content, etc., things that were manipulated because their stance is that all content, essentially, unless it breaks the terms of use and is like, grotesque, vulgar, violent, etc., will remain up because people can say what they want to say. And a lot of engineers in Silicon Valley were not happy with that decision because they felt that their platform should not just publish the news, but it should ensure that the quality of information is good, that it is right, that it's you know not going to cause detriment to the social pull in the US. However, that's not really a stance that a platform can take in the US. While this may be okay for Europe or Asia or many other countries, in the US, almost all social media has tried to remain very neutral in stances as to not get in trouble with the US government and freedom of speech laws. But what's even worse is Twitter, unlike Facebook, when Zuckerberg testified to Congress and gave very, very vague answers, Twitter instead explicitly denied the existence of these tools. Thus, this all summarizes into the fact that these hackers wanted to expose Twitter's lies about what their platform moderation and platform strategy is and show people through a very elaborate Bitcoin scheme what Twitter's backend really looks like. And I think this is a pretty brilliant strategy coming from someone who's worked in Silicon Valley, someone who's worked on engines relating to trending topics and the way that also people socially perceive news. First, you hack their favorite people that they like to follow. You hack celebrities, you hack politicians, you hack the wealthiest people in America. And then you make it about money. You make it look like these people are first offering money, then scamming money, then people realize it's a scam. And then there's a whole headline explosion of not just one person got hacked, but everyone got hacked at the same time. So all eyes are on Twitter. And then you shift the topic of conversation. The money's not a lot. 
it's intentionally not a lot of money. They probably knew that they wouldn't make a ton of money from it. But instead, while all eyes are on Twitter, you start taking control of accounts. As some security engineers have found, the hackers took control of high profile accounts that were not necessarily politicians, but people that were followed more by underground communities. You start tweeting the admin panel. You start getting a natural dialogue about it. Now there's an organic growth about what is Twitter doing. Even people that were not aware of the technical details of a hack or SQL injection or anything else are now caught up in this and they're mesmerized by the news of Twitter's political misdoings. And that is ultimately the interesting thing about this hack and why I'm making a video about it. Unlike many daily hacks or attempted hacks on social media giants or technology companies in general, where people are merely throwing bots against a system to test for SQL injections, potentially lose firewalls, open ports, you know, the name and registrations expiring. There's nothing really technically impressive about this. It's something that we all in our heads can grasp and understand that would probably happen. Hackers having some spare money from other schemes or Bitcoin scandals or wherever their money may have come from, instead just pay off people that are likely underpaid and fed up about working at Twitter, the customer service people. Thus, with maybe a simple two to $5,000 bribe, you have your own personal in to Twitter and you can take over the company's whole system without even needing to write a single line of code. And in Silicon Valley, we always say the less code that there is, the less you write, the more lines that you remove, the better. And that's the philosophy that the hackers took to this attack. And I think that's what makes this so interesting. This is not a classic Russian or Chinese scandal where they brute force enter a database and leak everything and sell it to another foreign government. As far as we know, and as far as Twitter has commented, none of that has actually happened. And my actual personal belief is that that probably didn't happen. I don't think the hackers were out to get everyone's passwords or DMs necessarily. Instead, it was about the political implications and getting Jack Dorsey under fire for his claims and for his company. There have been countless instances where Twitter got on the wrong side of deep web, dark web people, trolls, incels, whatever you want to call them. And they have pissed them off enough to the point that that's probably why this happened. And it's especially interesting because it's maybe one of the only cases of social engineering on a modern time frame in which such a large scale of a system has been exploited to the point that a company has essentially had to shut down its service and is no longer considered trustworthy in terms of its content, right? After this hack, even if you have a blue check mark, it doesn't mean that that tweet was necessarily you. And furthermore, there's actually major implications of what that could cause. For example, let's say the POTUS decides to tweet something that's completely maniac and nonsensical that he would normally get in big trouble for. Instead, because of this hack, Twitter has lost a lot of its reputation and people frankly don't believe that the content may be actually from the person that is verified. So instead, X person, or in this example, the POTUS, could say whatever he wants, claim that he was hacked, someone else posted it, and walk away completely free. Which is a huge reversal from former legal rulings on internet content, in which people were even verified by IP that they posted something and have been arrested for being that person responsible, which in most engineering spaces, people are aware that IP is not definitive proof. Your MAC address identifies the hardware that you own. Your IP address can be spoofed, but the US government has largely just ignored that and done what they've done anyway. So now we have the situation where IP addresses can't be trusted, verified accounts can't be trusted, emails may be completely spoofed. We don't know how much database or DMs have been leaked. And we know that Twitter has lied to the US government and that will be a very interesting story to follow. So I hope you all from this video have learned to look at this Twitter scandal from a slightly different light in terms of what the hack was about and what its intended outcomes are. And we'll keep following the news together as it unfolds. Otherwise, hope you all are staying safe in quarantine. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment letting me know what your thoughts are on this hack, why you think the hackers did this, and what you think might happen to Twitter, or if nothing will happen at all. Otherwise, stay tuned, there's plenty more content coming soon, and have a good one.